And again, I, I must say I'm pretty impressed by the applications that you guys create for for your company, for your users. They are in many cases, you know, far ahead like, than like industrial solutions like SAP and things like that. So I, I must say I was shocked when I saw the SAP GUI that we introduced lately in our company and what kind of user face they user interface they have. So a quick overview um, of the agenda: Team Developer Fallout 2 and before, Design Themes, UX Controls and their features, and questions. So Fallout 2 and before, remember Battleship Gray. Um, welcome to Windows 95. But some, you know, some users don't care about UI at all, and they, they are good with that. <laughs> Windows evolved from uh, Windows 2000, XP, what was that, Windows 7, Windows 10, and Team Develop evolved to the latest version with all these options now. Design themes introduced, I think, first in TD 5.2. The latest edition is this one here, um, the Office 2014. A uh, white theme, which is in my eyes a very clean, nicely designed theme. And actually, one thing I didn't mention on the roadmap was for Team Developer 7.0, 7.1, you will get the ability to create your own theme. So basically, there will be a theme that is defined in an XML file, and you can um, modify that to your needs. So these are the available themes and how they would look in, a, in an application. So, how to control or how to offer functionality in your applications via menus. <clears throat> we have many attributes for menus, font, font size, enabled, disabled, checked, unchecked, menu image, keyboard accelerator, function key. Menus can be cascading, of course. You've got window menus, a window menu bar, like this here. Um, you have pop-up menus, pop-up at current mouse position or on right click like this guy here. You have a complete menu API. I think that was introduced in 6.3 for menu application. You don't need to do um, window, direct windows with win user 32 access anymore or something like that. You can modify existing menus at runtime, font, font size, image, enable state, check state. You can create menus and pop up menus at runtime. You can control all attributes of static and dynamically create menus. Retrieve all attributes of static and dynamically created menus. So total control over menu creation at runtime. Toolbars, you get docking toolbars, which are kind of the older but still nice way to allow um, application navigation. They can be floatable, dock left, right, top, bottom. Multiple toolbars per, per window can contain all controls. The modern ones are the ribbon bars, like uh, introduced in Microsoft Office several versions ago. Very intuitive and very quick application navigation. You have ribbon tabs, and in the ribbon tabs you have ribbon groups with buttons, small and large data fields, check buttons, ready buttons. You have a gallery control that is a list of images that you can click on that stand for choices in your application. So this is how ribbon bars can look like drop down. This guy here is a gallery control where you basically choose, you know, from from images what to do or what to format. These are the small um, controls in a ribbon bar. And these are data fields and combo boxes in a ribbon bar. So a ribbon bar API, you can manipulate all static ribbon object attributes at runtime like things like hidden, unhidden, enabled, disabled, image, caption. You can create ribbon items at runtime, including all attributes using the function style ribbon add item. You have a message to trap clicks on dynamic, dynamic ribbon items, stem ribbon item click, so you can execute code depending on dynamically created ribbon items. 
quick overview of the container controls in uh, Team Developer. You have form windows, table windows, grid windows, dialog boxes, MDI windows, and MDI child windows. You have the Outlook navigation bar, Outlook control. It's a pane, contain, pane container, um, pretty much like a, um, like a tab control, but um, not horizontally, but vertically aligned. The panes can contain a tree control, for example, like in this example here, a date picker or date pickers, or any other controls, just like tab controls. And by clicking on, on those um, pane headers here, you can open the pane that is associated with that header. Full runtime manipulation API, so our the developers always like full um, property, a full property set that can be set at uh, design time of the application and then full runtime API so you'll be able to manipulate everything at runtime. We can create panes and associate child at application runtime, collapse and uncollapse panes, and hide unhide panes. The tab control, heavily used container control, I think, you know, that's probably the most used control that we have or the most used container control, quick navigation between larger window areas, static and dynamic creation of tabs and tab content, API for manipulating all attributes and creating tab pages at runtime. You can assign entire windows to tabs, which is a very nice feature. We have this guy here, which is kind of, you know, for backward compatibility, custom controls, that's old technology. ActiveX, mentioned that one can add additional functionality that is not covered by our controls into your application. These are the WPF custom controls, the .NET controls. They have an XAML initialization, which is a XML uh, snippet, basically, that defines the initial values of that control here in that XAML. They have WPF events. So if an event is triggered, you can react on the trigger on that. You have a runtime API, SAL WPF invoke method. You can call the methods of, the, of this control, and you can get and set the properties of the control at runtime. We saw the status bar today. Won't go through this one too much. And then the higher level UX controls that are uh, tied to more tightly tied to data, date picker and date time pickers, multiple date selectable, optional week numbers, API, set font color for a date, turn week numbers on off, retrieve selected dates. So, and if you look at these guys here, you can, you know, set a date range to a different color. Um, you can, in this guy here, you have multiple selected dates, and you, with that button, you, you get the selected dates from that control. And you have the same one for the date and for the date time picker, where you have that time portion here as well. The grid control has probably is, has become the most powerful control now. Many nice high usability column types, optional end user interaction. You saw some of this. Oh, oh actually, I showed all of this today. Extended API for total runtime control, and here are the grid column types. You have text, multi-line text, hyperlink, password, button, checkbox, ready buttons, images, date time, duration, progress bar. So you can create very rich um, grid, grid controls that you know, don't miss anything in um, feature-wise. Grid and user interaction, column sorting, grouping, the summary bar I mentioned, data filtering, and something that's always important as well is the ad hoc print preview and printing feature of the grid. So here's the um, uh, data filtering and this is the print preview for quick prints of the grid contents. The grid APIs, data export and import, column property functions, summary bar functions, column and row flags, and then, of course, important, the SQL functions, just with just one call, you can read all the data for a grid control or read all the data into a grid control. You can update all updated rows in a grid control, delete all rows that are marked for delete, insert all newly inserted rows into the grid with just, with just one call. Row focus functions and a lot more. 
Then there's the table control, which is kind of the older one, Win32 one. The progress bar, covered that today. Rich text control, you can write and save and load rich text content. You can save that rich text content to files. You can save it to databases. You can then print it via report builder. And this one has a comprehensive API as well. You can insert text, tables, images, formatting, everything from your code. The tree control, the new one, is quite nice as well. Totally setable by attributes. You can show the root, expand, checkbox set to on off, node image set by, uh, by node. You have a full runtime API, API data loading, navigation, set get attributes, tool tips, etc. And there's this nice content of the nice uh, principle of uh, having a node content and a node ID for easy data, database lookups. So basically, this um, node text here comes from the database, for example, it's, 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 it's a database column, but there's also a hidden, oops, a hidden element that you don't see, which is the node ID, which is the ID of that table, maybe, the ID column of that table. So you can easily retrieve that from the tree control and trigger updates, inserts, deletes, and things like that. The chart control, also a very rich chart control. You can create really complex charts, including statistical lines. You can have multiple charts in one control, like in this case here, you have two charts in one control. Extensive API, set get all attributes, set data ranges, export charts to images or Excel files. And then we have these guys here, our built-in WPF controls, which are gorgeous that you can set via XAML and use in your applications. So you can, if you want to create like um, dashboard type applications. And this is kind of XAML, I've seen that before. That in Report preview, that's the report builder that's included. That's some, not something new, but, um, and then it's, of course, all the set of standard controls that are um, available in team, level, team developer. So, in general, you have a powerful set of data aware controls, many modern design themes, very rich set of attributes, and very comprehensive runtime APIs to manage the UI of your application. And that was a quick overview of the UX controls in the team developer. Uh, we have a question from uh, uh, the group online on the grid. Can we drag and drop Excel file? Ooh, good question. Oh, need, need, um, no, not, not, not by default. No, that's not a, uh, but it's a good feature, yeah. I, I take note of that. <laughs> so it might be available in future features. Yeah, that's so a really cool idea. I like that one. So, uh, yeah. Programmatically, you could probably do it because drag and drop is available in Team Developer. So, yes. But complicated. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, that could be a nice feature. Uh, another question. With the creation of our own theme, we can control color on form title bar. And how about color on the highlighted menu text? True. <laughs> I, I would need to ask. I need to ask our engineers about that. I don't. I haven't seen the XML file yet, and what detail that means. That's something. I take note of it, and I will send you uh, send you the answer to it, and you can provide that afterwards. So that is the um, your I theme. I'll send you an email. Selected menu item, right? 